Mainstream history assures us that the states or countries or empires appeared naturally within the human society and were a sign of their sophistication and so-called advancement. However, the ancient Vedic literature portrays a completely different picture. From the Vedas, we learn about the times when humans lived in eternal peace and had a technology that did not poison the environment. There were no countries or states because there was no envy and no desire to divide things and natural resources in terms of mine and yours and theirs and so on. There were no countries or states. There was one world culture brought by the survivors to the primitive locals. For example, scientists, Americanologists like Leonard Adam, Carl Genze, Paul Rivet, Jose Imbellione and many others studied the Asian American parallels in art. They observed clear similarities in the motifs, ornaments and um, stylized design of, of cultural artifacts of East Asia on one hand and Northwest coast of America and Mexico on the other hand. And these uh, styles and ornaments were too close to develop just like that by chance and independently of each other. Later on, German and Austrian uh, ethnologists who created the theory of uh, the culture craze or cultural circles or fields like um, Greibner, Schmidt, uh, Ankermann and Cooper, amongst others, tried to prove that um, the cultures of all the nations around the globe originated from seven or eight successive waves of migration of a gigantic scale emanating from a certain mysterious center which uh, should be located somewhere in Europe or Asia. And it was only the mistaken Scaliger chronology which hindered these historians. Their observations about the cultural uh, items were absolutely correct, however they, they did not uh, fit in the mistaken official chronology. And so the final conclusion of the research of these various historians was destined to reach a dead end and this ethnologist concluded unfortunately nearly all the parallels that we presented are of no use as the chronological gap between them spans over many centuries if let's say the lotus pattern from Amaravati India date uh, to the 2nd century AD, their Mexican doubles from Chichen Itza were created somewhere around in the 12th century AD. In Cambodia, the step pyramid design appeared for the first time only in the 10th century AD, whereas in Mesoamerica that happened in the early 1st century BC. In those ancient times, the parasites fought the human race openly and everybody knew who is fighting whom. However, in more recent times, they completely changed their tactics. Now they don't show their faces openly and they only operate through a relatively small number of uh, humans who know everything and are members of the top levels of various secret societies. The rest of the population of the earth has been rendered so senseless and so unaware of its real nature and history as a result of the fraudulent propaganda of uh, the parasites which has been reshaping our views for many centuries that most of us have become not people, but sheeple, blindly following our so-called elected leaders. Although 
uh, so social surveys from all over the world all point to the fact uh, that most of the people on this planet consider their government leaders to be total scam and fraud and criminals, still those very same people watch TV every day, TV which is censored by that same honest government. And these very same people believe the school books, although these school books have been instituted as true by that same government. But we did not reach this pathetic low state just at once. That was a result of a centuries long psychological warfare on the side of the parasites. Social institution of a country or a state developed at this point of time when uh, the parasites manage to, to convince certain group of people to go against their own brothers. Then the need appeared for those groups to fence up parts of the earth as their own and call them states and countries. All this is described in the Vedas as the beginning of the Dark Ages of Kali Yuga. Before that, there were only provinces of the great empire of the survivors. And even that so-called empire was not an empire the way we imagine it nowadays. It was not a country that kept its citizens like slaves, like the modern countries. People were free and they owned the land they were born on. Finally, sometimes in the 16th and 17th century, the parasites managed to, to corrupt uh, a group of uh, the humans in the ter on the territory of uh, Western Europe. And uh, uh, those carried out, started carrying out their plan of uh, creating countries and states that were absolutely independent from the survivors. The parasites managed to appoint their own people which were rebels and um, insurgent kings who manipulated the public opinion uh, with lies and false religion-based slogans. According to the law of that time, kings who did not have proper right to the throne, who were insurgents, they had to be punished by death. And that is why these newly appointed rulers desperately needed a new history that will uh, make their claim to the throne seem legitimate. All this was centrally orchestrated by the parasites and that is why a very similar scenario happened almost in each and every European country. And that is when Scaliger was ordered to create a new history that would be convenient to the insurgent rulers. It was very close and similar to the real events that happened. However, the uh, empire of the survivors and their glorious past was absolutely excluded from this history. Not only the history of the empire was distorted beyond recognition, but furthermore, it was shifted, it was uh, sent to the faraway past and thus made look even more unimportant and irrelevant to the new historic reality that was imposed upon the people somewhere in the 16th and 17th century. The Society of the Flemish Jesuits issued 53 thick volumes with um, so-called um, ancient books that um, conveniently disappeared in various library fires after the copies of them were made by these Jesuits. Another big center of the so-called copy making was the order of the Benedict monks. And it is well known fact of the mainstream history that when the monks were making these copies, they were also very actively correcting them to fit um, the 17th century Bible events. And actually that is one of the best scenarios. In some cases there was no ancient text at all and compositions that were written in 16th and 17th century are now quoted as ancient works. A huge collection of so-called ancient books whose originals conveniently and selectively burned in um, library fires was published by these Benedict monks and this collection contained 200 
21 volumes of Latin works supposedly uh, belonging to ancient Romans and 161 volumes supposedly written by ancient Greek authors. If you think that all monks of that time were innocent godly creatures, who could not be susceptible to any corruption, please watch the episode uh, that comes in the description of this video under number 6. Some three-fourths of all historic dates that you see in your history school books today are based on supposedly ancient book called FCB Pamphili. Since this ancient work was most important for the timings of all historical events, that is why the father of the fabricated history, Scaliger, took to the task himself. Mainstream history assures us that after Scaliger made a copy of this very ancient manuscript, the original disappeared. Our history, the way we know it, is mostly based on this book. The rest, so-called ancient sources, are the books that were copied by the monks, but not just any monks, just few very selected and small groups that I mentioned earlier. If you want to know more details about the true phase of the Reformation period, you can read the books of Anatoly Fomenko. But to replace the entire history of entire planet is not that easy. Okay, they created the new version, but the real records, the real old books and the memory of the people still kept the real history that needed to be destroyed. That is why, under the false flag of religious slogans, lists of banned books were created. Most of the books, all books, not just religious books, were in these lists. Very few of the truly uh, old books were not enlisted. Basically, everything that was old needed to be burned and destroyed completely. If one book of a given author belonged to a banned list, that meant automatically, by law, that all of the other books of this particular author were banned as well and uh, must be um, given by the citizens for burning. Otherwise, the citizens would be burned themselves. And along with the books, very often in the fires uh, would end up the authors of the books as well. The clergy appointed numerous and very strict commissions that would um, keep a very close eye and uh, actually had absolute control on what could be printed and what could be not and who possesses what kind of books at home. Literary style searches were conducted at various suspect locations, private and public. All borders were under very strict control for banned books. However, controlling the maps that the sailors use was a bit more difficult for obvious reasons. That is why now and then uncomfortable ancient maps surface. As of today, there is no scientific collection published that contains all old maps. One must work hard to find different fragments here and there and in most cases the maps are published in very low resolution so that one cannot read the small details and also that makes it uh, harder to notice the places where the map has been edited in recent times. And even after all that there were people who were skeptical about the new history and didn't want to accept it. That is why the Holy Inquisition always had fires ready at hand to burn those who did not agree. Besides being burned alive, there were many other options available. This is how our so-called history 
was made official, not by scientists and not by historians.